The Chicago Bears own the number one overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. Entering the draft with already an established quarterback, the most cap space of any team entering the 2022 offseason, and a young core on both sides of the ball that you can build off Justin Fields and guys like Jaquan Brisker, and more for the most ideal situation entering a rebuild. Today, Tony, yes, Tony and I are going to be going over just another year of Chicago's second mock draft now that we for sure have the mock draft order. Feels great to be back. A couple important comments. Got to get off my chest. Green Bay sucks. Aaron Rodgers is the worst quarterback in the NFC North. Justin Fields should not be traded by the Bears. And that coward Quay Walker should be banned for eternity. We're not going to do any tradebacks in this draft, just so you know. But please go back and check out our other videos over the last few weeks of all different ideas of what could happen and who the Bears could get. And if you don't mind, please hit the like button on this video and share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you like updates like this from Tony and I, please hit the subscribe button. All right, let's go. Round one, pick number one. We are going with Will Anderson Jr. Edge out of Alabama. 6'4", 243 pounds. A junior who is 21 years old. Grew up in Hampton, Georgia. Was injured a little bit in 2022, but still had fantastic stats from when he did play. In 2020, 22, uh, Will Anderson Jr. had 51 total tackles, 24 of those being solo, 27 being assist, 10 sacks, one pass deflection, and one interception. He has a 93.6 grade according to NFLDraftBuzz.com, and he's the number one ranked edge entering the NFL draft as of right now. He is a 4.5640. Tackling, he is ranked 64 out of 100. Pass rush, he's 96 out of 100, a key need for the Chicago Bears. Run defense, 100 out of 100. Again, another key need for for the Chicago Bears and coverage 75 out of 100. The Bears are known for dropping back their edges into coverage and obviously already being a 75 out of 100 is pretty darn good. Why him? Bears need the next big pass rusher to help them out along with his generational type talent. I know a lot of people have been like, is he really generational type talent? Go and look at his highlights. He is NFL ready, Khalil Mack type player absolutely ready to go. And he's an instant upgrade for this roster. Also watching the TCU versus Georgia game, uh, Jalen Carter Jr., who is another guy who the Bears could take number one overall if they want to go in the defense direction, looked absolutely gassed and very easily gassed out there, which kind of concerns me. But the next pick is not what I'm concerned about. In the second round with the 56th overall pick from the Baltimore Ravens with the Roquan trade, the Bears will be taking Matthew Bergeron offensive tackle out of Syracuse. He's six foot five, 322 pounds. Uh, he's coming out as a junior. He's 22 years old. He's actually from Victoriaville, Quebec. We have a Canadian citizen that we would be taking here. His 2022 stats include that he started all but one game uh, due to injury, played 740 total snaps in the season. On the season, he had an overall offensive grade of 74.8%, pass block rate of 84.1%, and a run block rate of 68.1%, according to Pro Football Focus. The draft buzz that's been going around. Mel Kuyper has him ranked as the number five offensive tackle prospect. And he has like a third round grade, but at this point, he might be best available with how fast these tackles might go off the board. Why him? He has extensive experience at right and left tackle, and we know the Bears have never get injured, so we wouldn't need that, right? Uh, excellent body control and good mobility. Predominantly a zone rushing blocker. He keeps his feet engaged and operates from a consistent base. They do think that his pass blocking is going to come along. This one may change. It depends on, like we said, you know, whether tackles move up, whether tackles move down. He may not, may not be available. He might be the worst guy available at this point. We'll see. And kind of like changing things up, like Tony said, I already did a mock draft already. And in this round, I had Jack Campbell, the linebacker from Iowa coming out, which he is a Brian Urlacher type guy comparison. Rocco, if you're watching, go watch the video. Don't just make assumptions. But with the third pick for the Chicago Bears in round three at 65, the Chicago Bears, I think, are going to select D. Winters, linebacker from TCU. 6'1", 230 pounds, a senior at 22 years old from Breckham, Texas. His 22 stats are pretty darn impressive. 79 total tackles, 48 being solo, 31 being assist, seven and a half sacks as a linebacker, which is super impressive. Means that he can get after the quarterback and create pressure. He had one fumble recovery, one interception, and two pass deflections. He is an 80.4 grade according to NFLDraftBuzz.com. He's the 15th ranked linebacker in the draft as of right now, but we expect that number to go up because he is a 40 time of 4.5, tackling 57 out of 100, pass rush 70 out of 100, something that the Bears need in order to create pressure on the quarterback. His run defense, though, 
is 49 of 100, something that they can work on, and his coverage is 57 out of 100. Why him? He can get after the quarterback. He has a lot of speed for the linebacker position and is a pretty big guy from his weight to height ratio, making him a hard hitter, and it could be tough for running backs and any other ball carrier to get around. He can get sideline to sideline at ease and is a quick off-the-ball linebacker that we need. Now, in the fourth round, but the 103rd overall pick, Chicago Bears are going to take Marvin Mims, wide receiver out of Oklahoma. He is 5'11", 184 pounds, 20, and he was 21 by the draft. His birthday's in March. Uh, he's out of Frisco, Texas. Got a fun fact about that coming up for you. 2022 stats include 54 catches for 1,083 yards and six touchdowns, right around 20 yards per reception. Pretty good, I'd argue. He has a quarterback rating when targeted. Obviously, he's not the quarterback. His quarterback is rated 122.4 when targeted him very good this guy is electric the nfl draft buzz grading he was rated very highly over the past couple of years he has slid back a little due to size concerns so did if we're gonna you know i don't want to make an official comparison but Devonta smith he is projected in the third round but we basically you know i know this is a fourth round pick it's basically a really late third round pick here and again things will change especially as the combine comes up why him he's an athlete that's <laughs> that's the easiest explanation Excellent hands, great at high pointing balls. He's a natural playmaker and a vertical threat. Um, again, weakness, biggest weakness is he is a bit undersized. Uh, and my fun fact that I promised you all is that this whole state of Texas, he holds the high school career receiving yards record at 5,485, 82 more than Ohio State star receiver Jackson Smith. Najimwa. For Ron, I hope Ron's listening. I actually researched that and did a whole video on him. Make sure that you guys go check that out. But I got you, Tony Najemwa. So with the Bears' fifth pick, which is in the fourth round at pick 134 via the Philadelphia Eagles, I have the Chicago Bears selecting Fabian Lovett, defensive lineman from Florida State University. 6'4", 306 pounds, a junior who is 21 years old from Vicksburg, Mississippi. His 2022 stats are pretty impressive. From a defensive lineman perspective, he has 10 total tackles, 5 solo, 5 assists, but he has 1 sack and 1 forced fumble. Again, defensive linemen don't have a lot of tackles. They are men up the middle that in order to create opportunities for the edges and linebackers to go after running backs who have to break it to the outside. According to NFLDraftBuzz.com, he has an 81.6 overall rating, 36 out of all the defensive linemen in the NFL draft as of right now. Tackling 39 out of 100. Again, defensive linemen, they don't need to tackle that much. They create opportunity because they are a wall. Pass rush, 67 out of 100, though. He is very good at getting after the quarterback. And rush defense, 73 out of 100. Why him? I think his grades for pass rush and rush defense both speak volumes, especially as a later round pick. He is a massive man up the middle who can be a wall, causes interference with draws up the middle, causing running backs to go to the outside. He also has the length in power being 6'4", 306 pounds to dominate offensive linemen. And on top of that, he is very good at shed blocking, according to Scott. I just got to say, Nick, I absolutely love it. In the fifth round with pick number 136, the Chicago Bears are going to select Luke Weipler, probably said that right, center out of Ohio State. You did say it right because I did another video on him as well. So yes, Tony, you are correct. Of course, that's where I got my pronunciation from. He's six foot three, 300 pounds, a redshirt sophomore. Um, so he is, he played with Justin Fields only technically. And we'll, I'll get into that in a minute. He is from Montvale, New Jersey. His 22, uh, 22 stats include, he had 12 games, 12 total games played, totaled 757 snaps. He gave up an impressive six quarterback hurries, no quarterback hits, and no sacks while playing at center. His NFL draft buzz grading, he has projected a top 100 pick. That was earlier in the season though. And he is slowly, again, like, like when I was talking about Mims, he's kind of slid down the draft boards a little bit, making him a prime target, snagging that early fifth round, get a lot of value out of that. So as I said with Fields, specifically, he played 15 snaps in Fields' last year at Ohio State, gave up no quarterback hurries, no hits, uh, no sacks. I did not do the film research. I would imagine he was playing in garbage time, so I can't imagine Fields was on the field, but they might know each other, which would be cool. Why him? He is considered a mauler. I've seen that on everything I've read about him. He's a mauler, uh, and he's agile enough to get to the second level. 
also he is so a weakness is he is very raw on his technique he must improve the little things but overall he seems like a guy i can definitely get excited about and my last pick out of this mock draft which i'm excited about because i've done defense the entire time if you guys haven't realized in the fifth round at pick 149 via the new england patriots which this pick has moved up eight spots since my last mock draft, by the way. The Chicago Bears are going to select Jason Jones, defensive lineman from Auburn, 6'6", 326 pounds, a sophomore who is 20 years old from Calera, Alabama. In 2022, Jason Jones had 28 total tackles as a sophomore, 11 being solo, 17 being assist with one forced fumble and one fumble recovery. According to NFL Draft Buzz rating, he's a 76.7, the number 54 defensive lineman on the board. He's a 40 time of 5.18, but we don't need his speed in order to chase after guys because he's going to be an absolute brick house up the middle tackling 73 out of 100 rush defense 68 out of 100 pass defense 63 out of 100 the bears need a giant monster up the middle and why not this guy standing at six foot six 326 pounds definitely go after him he's a massive dude with crazy strength that can be formed pretty well into a scary defensive lineman in the nfl he may be slow but again we don't need that we need him to slow down everybody so the rest of his teammates can go after and be the monsters of the midway round seven pick 200 and 20. Nick, this may be your favorite player in the NFL draft. Habuk Bellonado. I think I nailed it. He's a defensive end out of Pittsburgh. He's six foot five, 260. He was a redshirt senior, so he played every year, plus one. And he is 23 years old. The most important part of this whole pick, and the whole reason I picked it, he is from Rome, Italy. His 2022 stats include 24 tackles, two sacks, three passes defense. Not great. I, I understand that may not be great, but in 2021, he did have 41 tackles and nine sacks it looked like he was kind of maybe not hurt necessarily but he just wasn't it wasn't up to his top production so going into the draft buzz grading again not much to say i truly couldn't find <laughs> nobody was saying he was a top prospect i'll put it that way his size is sick though and the most important part this would be a good homage to chicago's italian heritage uh, to take a player like this. And that is our entire mock draft 2.0. Tony came back for it. We're happy to have him back. Again, please share your comments in the comment section below of who you think the Chicago Bears should take in the 2023 NFL draft. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago, and we'll see you guys next time.